Lou here. You know, a lot of people always ask me to do a top 5 of the best indie RPG horror games. Rather than a list of the typical things like Madfather and Eeb, I thought I'd highlight some horror games that don't get much love. This is top 5 underrated indie horror games. Roll the intro and let's get started. <laughs> Now, I do have to warn that for some of these, I don't have gameplay footage for it. This is because I don't own some of the games here. Although these games are free, some of them are so old that the download links are super fucking suspicious. And since I like having a virus-free computer, I didn't want to take any chances with them. So forgive me for the slightly boring visuals this time around. That and I was kind of pressed for time for this video, as I have a lot of lengthy reviews this Halloween, so some of them I didn't have time to replay again. Also, a massive trigger warning that I will be talking about horror games, so if you're sensitive to dark themes and blood, I don't recommend watching this video. Mental health comes first, and I just want to warn, as I've seen some people in the past watch horror videos while completely underestimating that horror is horrifying? With that out of the way, let's start the list. At number 5, we have Dot Flow by LOL. Now, this is a fairly popular one, hence why it's at number 5, but I notice it has lost its major fanbase over time, which is kind of sad, actually. While Yumi Niki rises in popularity, its fan games really do slowly fall into obscurity. Then again, this is all the same game of exploring your dreams and weird shit happening like LSD Dream Emulator. Dot Flow is about a girl named Sabitsuki who's locked in her room all day, only instead of going to sleep to dream, she goes into her computer, which I'm sure is reminding everybody of Serial Experiments Lane. The aesthetics of Dot Flow lean a lot more towards horror than the original Yuminiki's focus on surrealism. While there are peaceful worlds in any dream, you will find horror within that dream. You'll find rusted things, diseases, medical aesthetics, test tubes, and gas masks to be a common thing Thing within her dreams. Many interpret this, myself included, that Sabutsuki has some kind of fatal disease and that's why she's locked in her room. Not really due to personal trauma or depression like Madotsuki, but she's quarantined from everyone for her safety as her fatal disease is likely contagious. This could explain the computer in the first place being her dreamlike space. It's possible this is symbolism to her being hooked up on some kind of machine that's trying to keep her alive. Then again, it doesn't explain everything in Dot Flow. This is just an interpretation I strongly believe solely because of the aesthetics of her dreams. Though I have no idea where the fuck Smile, his sister, and Oreko fit into this. Now, indie RPG Maker games don't really freak me out anymore. I mean, I still get scared from the witch's house, but that's because I'm a wimp when it comes to jump scares. That's all. Probably because I was like 14-ish when I first heard about RPG Maker games, and I think everyone knows from TikToks 14-year-olds are scared a little too easily. However, playing Dot Flow genuinely creeps me out. Unlike Yumi Niki, I don't feel this wide-eyed curiosity. This is mostly because of Dot Flow's incredible droning soundtrack, amazing atmosphere design, and just general aesthetic. It's weird, because those tiny pixels shouldn't do anything to scare me, but somehow this game gives me the fucking creeps every time I pick it up and play it. If you want a game that'll genuinely make you feel uncomfortable and tense, I highly recommend Dot Flow. At number 4, we have Red Book by Kazegimu. Now, this game was apparently remade as Red Book Discordia Tales, which is interesting that it was remade, but it also apparently completely scrapped the old story, which is a shame. Now, I have not played Discordia Tales, but I did play the original version from 2014. Apparently, you can't play the original version anymore, so I'm sorry if this screen is really boring, as I could only find a few screenshots and fan art. The last time I found this game was back in 2014, and it was on a super suspicious website or something, so I don't want to put any viruses on my computer, so... Technically speaking, this is a bootleg of The Witch's House. 
But that's difficult to technically claim it a bootleg when all other assets used in the game, including the music and sprites, are open sourced and free to use for RPG Maker games. However, I still want to technically claim it as a bootleg. The story for the original game was basically about a girl named Alice who wanders into this mansion while it rains or something. The puzzles is what made people stay away from the original the most as the puzzles were ridiculously bad and difficult because of it. But if you manage to get past the bad game design, then it's not that bad. Basically, a girl also named Alice lived in the house, her mother was abusive and I think was in a cult, and ended up murdering Alice in that house. Her ghost remained and I think she wanted to follow our Alice or take over her body because she never wanted to die. Either that or just have someone to play with. The remake is basically that Red Riding Hood and Alice from Alice in Wonderland are sisters, I think. Alice kills Red because edgy, and Red tries to get revenge by trapping Alice in the Red Book, which is a fairy tale book. Both stories are stupidly confusing, vague, and really edgy. You know what though? I kinda like it. It's kinda cute in that way. I basically view it like I would view a low budget dollar bin horror movie, you know? Awful and garbage, but charming in its own way. Who doesn't want to enjoy a game so bad that it loops back around good? Fun fact by the way, it turns out he made another game shortly after inspired by Hansel and Gretel. That one seems to have better reviews than Red Books, if you want to try it out then I say go ahead. Though it is crazy that this developer is shrouded in mystery. I tried to find information on them, but apparently Red Book and Hansel or Gretel are the only games they made all the way back in 2016. Overall, if you want to see someone's first attempt at a game and learn to take pointers from it, I actually really recommend this game. At number 3 we have Yandarela by Sharon. I don't really like it, but what I do like is the weird subversion of the love triangle trope actually. The story is basically about this guy hanging out with his two childhood friends. The shy blue one is Hinata while the bitchy one is Honoka. They're in a love triangle for protagonist Kun's feelings, whose name is Yatoru by the way. Except, no matter who you choose to date, no matter what choice you make, one will snap that you didn't choose them and brutally murder the other girl before you two do the horizontal tango. I think Honoka also cuts off your peen, but I might be confusing that with another Yandere story by the same person. As I've said before, I'm not a fan of the Yandere trope, and frankly I think the story is so ridiculous it's comical. I mean, these girls are perfectly normal until they bust into the other's room to stab and cut peens. Like, seriously? Jeez, at least Doki Doki did something creative with the Yandere trope. However, I do like the art style. I always appreciate a subversion of the love triangle trope by showing how toxic the concept of a love triangle is. No matter what you do, you're hurting the other person by being indecisive. Though this, to me, feels a bit fetishy in terms of execution. I'm not kink shaming by the way, just stating that the random gore and an out of nowhere yandere comes across like someone trying to please their own fetish, I guess. While I don't like it, I can't deny that it is underrated, especially for fans of Yandere Simulator who want Yandere stories or something like that. This guy also makes a lot of last minute Yandere games, so if you ended up liking Yanderella, then he's made a few other games. Though many of these are not fully translated, or not translated at all, due to some controversies that I don't really have time to discuss in this video. At number 2 we have Flesh Child by Bleed. While cancelled, I really love this game. I know this is basically a glorified demo, but I genuinely really loved this game when it came out. I love how unique the visuals were, being a very fleshy and doll-like in its imagery, but the art style is where it really shines. The story isn't fully elaborated on, but basically there's this alien parasite thing living underneath every city that makes their children go out and become human, I guess? How? Killing people and taking suitable body parts. Pretty horrifying, actually. 
Although a Yumi Nikki fan game, this is one of the most unique in its presentation. You're first a genderless blob named Vis that is told to go out and just get some parts. You solve some puzzles around the place you figure out to go to that has the parts you need and collect said part. When you do get your first part, which is a human brain, you have to choose between a male brain and a female brain. This is when you're either Vice or Vissy, respectively. Though everyone has noted that both Vice and Vissy look like Smile and his sister, so you can definitely see the dot flow inspirations. After obtaining whatever part you need, your fleshy mom tells you to rest where the dreamlike sequence begins. Basically, you run around and find effects until the game runs out. That was my experience anyway. Gonna be honest that the dream portion was the weaker part of this game. The effects were interesting. Personally, the doll effect is my favorite, but the rest were kinda... meh. If it wasn't for the flaws and the fact that it was unfinished, I absolutely would put this at number one. But as this is now unfinished and the creator said it's permanently cancelled, I'm gonna have to leave it here. Though I ask that you please do not harass or bother Bleat about continuing Flesh Child. Firstly, Bleat hasn't been active on social media since 2018, I believe. Second, it's just human decency, really. If someone doesn't want to do something, you shouldn't harass someone about it. No honorable mentions this time around. This list was already pretty difficult as is since a lot of RPG horror maker games go on to become popular, and I wanted to gush more over the games actually on this list. Now to number one, the moment you've all been waiting for. Number 1, Fran Bo by Kill Monday Games. Honestly, one of my favorite horror games in general, actually. I know some people say Fran Bo is a bootleg of American McGee's Alice, and while I did play the demo of that game as a kid, I can't really say I agree with that statement. Because they're both based off Alice in Wonderland and like, a heavy inspiration isn't copying to me, that's all. While Franbo was popular when it first released, and I noticed a small resurgence from online videos like mine, its popularity has definitely gone down, especially when you look at the very low fanfare on Kill Monday's other game and pseudo-sequel to Franbo called Little Misfortune. I don't really consider that one to be horror entirely, hence why it's not in this video, but you can definitely see that the game isn't as popular. To a lot of people, they only remember it because Markiplier and Jacksepticeye played it, which is really unfortunate because I genuinely adore this game. What's it about? Fran Bo is a 10-year-old girl living in 1930s who knows where. One night, she noticed a dark figure coming to her parents' room to discover they were brutally murdered. Frightened for her life because this is a figure saying she's next, she runs out of her house and into the woods where she went unconscious. Basically, the police think she did it and she's now in a mental asylum with other children of various mental health issues. Fran herself thinks she's fine, but as you play the game, you do notice Fran clearly has some sort of mental health issue. Though, she clearly didn't murder her parents, but likely her own mental illness is making her question it. She suffers from brief psychosis episodes and is distrusting of authority figures according to her medical chart, so I'll leave it up to you guys on whatever mental illness Fran has. Personally, I believe pushing up Rose's theory on Franbo, but that's just me. Throughout the game, you play as Fran as you solve puzzles and click puzzles to try and figure out what happened to her parents. All the while, Fran has plans to go back home or live with her aunt. I won't spoil the game here because I want you guys to play it, and I did do a review of it on my channel with horrendously outdated sprites if you guys want to see that. I'll leave a link in the description, but I highly recommend you all give Franbo a try. This game reminds me of my favorite movie of all time, Coraline, which the devs actually said was a major inspiration for Franbo. Likely why Fran wears a yellow dress and her sidekick is a black cat. Kill Monday also made a statement saying that Franbo is getting a sequel in the future, so what better time to get into it than now? That's it for this video though. Do you know any of these games or any of these games your favorite? If you want to play any of these games, then I'll leave a link down below to all official sources for these games. Be sure to let me know down below what you think.
Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new. If any of you would like to help support my channel in any possible way, my Ko-fi page is down below in the description along with all of my social media. For any subscribers, new or old, who'd like to help with video ideas or maybe just want to talk about anime or something, I have a fan server linked down below. See you next time!